Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Monday, the 27th of September, 2021, and it's time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. A lot going on out there. Can you believe how busy it has been? We've had very powerful Hurricane Sam. We've got a couple of other areas to watch down in the deep tropics. We have the leftovers of Peter still trying to raise a ruckus out there. Good news is all of this is out in the east to east central part of the Atlantic and nothing threatening land directly right now. Nothing going on in the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico or anywhere nearby. And I will add to that, though, that could change because as we get into October, which need I remind you, it's September 27th, so October's knocking on the door. Um, I think that's going to change. At least the potential is going to be there for development in the Caribbean, and that's where naturally we would look as normally, anyway, the main development region in the tropical Atlantic begins to shut down become less favorable and the focus shifts over to the western Atlantic Basin, the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, the southwest Atlantic, all of that area that is much closer to where people live, right, generally speaking. So let's take a look at what we've got going on out there. Interesting tweet here from another Sam. Uh, this is a real person, Sam, not the hurricane tweeting. Haha. Ha. But Sam's talking about Sam here that uh, where we are, you know, that we had a Category 4 and uh, maybe 5. You know, some people think it could have been a 5, maybe, at some point, And that's, you know, debatable. But this is really rare where Sam was. And look at that. There's Sam. There's Lorenzo. All the rest this time of year from September 25th on have been much farther to the west. So Sam was indeed in some rare territory. And, you know, no matter... If we go back one tweet here, no matter whether it was 130 or 140 knots, and that was the debate, a lot of people talking about this on message boards, on Twitter, etc. Because um, it certainly looked like it could have been a Cat 5 yesterday. And there was some recon out there, some research missions going on, and we really should be grateful for that. But because it was so far out there, you're not going to have constant recon surveillance as we would if it was closer to land areas. And so, you know what, I'll trade that. If we don't get the recon constantly, so to speak, that means it's not really close to land. And in the case of Sam, as intense as it was, that's a good thing that it wasn't close to land. So whether or not it was a Cat 4, Cat 5, doesn't really matter. Look at this, this is amazing. Sam definitely out there in some rare company and uh, in terms of where it was located, this late in the season being so far south and east in the Atlantic. Well, how's it going with Sam today? Well, it's gone through some changes in the overnight hours, not quite as strong. Uh, pressure came up quite a bit. It's gone through what we call an eye wall replacement cycle, where the inner eye collapsed away and an outer wind maxima or eye wall developed and started to uh, constrict and sort of take over. And we can show you that a little bit better in terms of how things have worked out on the close-up satellite picture in just a moment. Got to pay attention to this area, a little monsoon trough action. I'll show you a tweet related to that in just a few minutes. And then here's the leftovers of Peter. But the good news, though, seriously, nothing over here in the Caribbean or the Gulf. Just nice dry continental air through here, except out in parts of the Four Corners region. I saw Eric Webb tweeting about that. Some rainy, inclement weather. New Mexico, Arizona, and vicinity. Nice upper level low there. Pretty good for them. You need all the rain you can get. All right, so a close-up here of Sam this afternoon. Looks like the core has come back some there. You've got this eye developing again with some lightning in and around that core again today. Not as much as we saw yesterday. That was incredible. I showed you that on yesterday's update. Sam's still fairly compact overall, not a very large hurricane, but still has plenty of upper-level wind support through here. It won't surprise me as it kind of wobbles along here off to the northwest and eventually turning to the north, that it becomes a Category 4 again. Fluctuations in intensity, as they say, pretty common with these systems. So Bermuda, looking pretty good over here. There's Bermuda right there. Sam at a pretty comfortable distance off to the east of Bermuda. Bermuda is in the western part of the Cone of Uncertainty, certainly. Uh, but I'm feeling pretty good about this. And it will be of no consequence at all except for some swells that will get generated and don't discount those those can be problematic in their own right but other than that the threat to the lesser Antilles is zero 
and the same can be said for the southeast and Florida, all the way up to the northeastern part of the U.S. But Atlantic Canada, uh, we may need to watch for you folks up here, uh, mainly in Newfoundland and uh, vicinity. Yeah, you know, Larry passed through there recently, and Sam might come pretty close. We'll have to see. That's still a few days away, so we'll wait and see how that all pans out. But generally speaking, we're going to get pretty lucky here that there's just not enough ridging out over the western Atlantic to trap Sam and bring it into the uh, United States or vicinity. Uh, you know, good, right? We've had enough. That is for sure. All right, so moving on along. Check this out. I just can't, I mean, wow. The really incredible difference here between the Pacific with this ongoing developing La Nina, the cold PDO look over here, contrasted with this very warm Atlantic relative to average to the point now where I'm like, all right, we got to talk about this. Uh, later today, I'm going to speak with Phil Klotzbach, Dr. Phil Klotzbach. He's back in Colorado after spending a few years in California. Now he's living back in Colorado again. If you follow him on social media, you might have seen some of the beautiful pictures that he posted from up in the mountains there. He and I aren't going to talk about that very much, though. We're going to talk about that, this thing, the warm Atlantic, this warm AMO look that we've got, the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation. What is that? Why did it strengthen this year? How has it impacted this year's hurricane season? And what are we potentially looking at going forward over the next 60 days or so, the rest of September into October and November, this right here is a pretty big clue. Pretty warm in the Caribbean. These are departures from average. Remember, these are the anomalies. And uh, Dr. Klotzbach and I will talk about that this afternoon on a special edition of Hurricane U. I'll post that on Patreon first and then make it available to everyone on YouTube on Wednesday. All right, the Gulf of Mexico cooling off a little bit in the northern Gulf. Really good news to see up here. Hopefully, in terms of major impacts, this area's hurricane season is done. I can't say that for sure. That's just a hope. And you know, like I say, hope by itself. Hope is not a planning tool. You can't just hope everything away. It doesn't work. you got to take some action, too. But this might be a pretty good sign. Water temperature is getting close to just about 80 degrees and will start dropping from there might even be some sub 80 Fahrenheit up in there as well. Meanwhile, though, down here, different story. And this is where I'm most concerned in terms of U.S. impacts for the rest of the season. We get something developing in the Caribbean. A front comes down, heights fall to the north, and it comes up through Florida. They can turn more sharp than that, go across Cuba and the Bahamas, a la Michelle, in 2001. This would be similar to Wilma. Wilma is much farther to the south down here, of course. But you never know. This is the time of year that we really have to watch the Florida Peninsula uh, from Caribbean and Gulf systems. Meanwhile, in the western Atlantic, still pretty warm overall, although the shelf waters are cooling off now. 25 Celsius right up against the beaches near where I, where I live. It's about 78, 79 degrees. A little warmer down in the low country of South Carolina and along the east coast of Florida for the most part. But the season's getting late. Things are going to start winding down where we can expect less impacts up here unless they are from the leftovers of something moving pretty fast. And you can still get some bad impacts. You know, I mean, Sandy, 2012, kind of a different situation, but it's not over till it's over. And alluding to that fact, this uh, tweet here from TC Alert. High school kid, remember I've showed you this before, very smart, and uh, this is what he or she was tweeting. I still need to send them a message and say, who are you? Where do you live? What's, you know, maybe I could interview this person. You know, find out, because when I was in high school, I was addicted to the Weather Channel and no other radio. That's pretty much all I had. It wasn't until college that, you know, the internet and sites like um, Weather Underground and University of Wisconsin, National Hurricane Center, of course. Anyway, I digress. Interesting tweet here from TC Alert that satellite imagery indicating this monsoon trough, sorry, trying to draw on it here, this monsoon trough developing out here off the coast of Africa. That's the southwest part of Africa right there. And this is where our next pair of systems could come from. One of them already in Vest Area 90L, and uh, we might get a little bit of development from these. And if they don't develop here, they could end up being a problem out in 
the western part of the basin and another tweet from the same person alluding to that here the GEFS basically on the ensembles indicating this pretty robust area of anticyclonic flow in the upper levels starts to develop over the next few uh, days into two weeks or so going from a unfavorable pattern to one that is more favorable there throughout time once we get into October and one more uh, indicator of this over from Storm 2K. By the way, this is where I found the tweet from Sam. But um, here, Storm 2K, these folks talking about all kinds of stuff in the uh, thread here, the ongoing thread about the indicators for this year, how things are going. And I was scrolling through, and this graphic down here caught my attention. And it is the one that I showed you yesterday, but it was updated. This is a different one. And this one shows, as we get it in here, one more time. Uh, there we go. The upward motion from the ECMWF EPS, the ensemble mean here at 200 millibars in the atmosphere. And again, if you know how to read this, this is all upward motion in here. Green is upward motion. This is the area of the Mercator projection tropics version that it's impacting, so to speak, and the MJO phases thereof. So right now, kind of ho-hum in the Atlantic, but look at this. Once we get to around the 7th of October, that first week and beyond, this is in the future down here. This is the present, this is the future. And this is what we're talking about. Green upward motion, where? For this area, when? The first week of October and points forward in the future from there. All right, so there you go. Lots of stuff happening currently and in the future, it does appear. Twitter, Facebook, you're watching on YouTube. And this look like little lollipops, right? Whatever. Um, easily distracted, am I? Sometimes. Uh, if you're following on YouTube and you're new to the to the video here, you know, subscribe, like, share, tell your friends about what we're doing. And if you want to become involved with it, you can scan that QR code and directly support everything we're doing and get access to stuff that's truly incredible, like the interactive map that I showed you here that Hurricane U series, anytime I put new stuff up, and just the interaction and what we're building there on the crowdfunded site. Connected from Hurricane Track Insider to Patreon, you can get involved, and it's only $10 a month. Not bad for what we do here and what we have accomplished, especially in just the last three years that we have really grown that Patreon following, now over a 1,000 strong. All right, well, that is it from me for this afternoon. Have a great rest of your Monday and a great week ahead. We'll be following a lot, that is for sure. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.